各位记者朋友，大家下。Friends from the media, good afternoon. Welcome to today's press conference. Now, questions, please. 发言人好，中新社记者提问。今天上午，大湄公河自居。China News Service. This morning, the Ace Greater Mekong Subregion Summit was held in Kunming. Premier Li Qiang attended and addressed the event. Can you update us on that? This morning, Premier Li Qiang chaired the Ace Greater Mekong Subregion Summit in Kunming, Yunnan. Heads of Government of Cambodia, Law PDR, Myanmar, Thailand, and Vietnam, and President of the Asian Development Bank attended the summit. Premier Li noted that over the past three decades and more since its inception, the GMS mechanism has become an important platform for cooperation and common development of China and Mekong countries. Thanks to concerted efforts, regional economic cooperation made new progress with growing trade and investment, greater connectivity, expanding cooperation, and deepening affinity between the peoples. The fruitful cooperation outcomes showcase the vitality and resilience of GMS. Premier Li Tian stressed that China and Mekong countries are developing countries that share closeness geographically, culturally, and between the peoples. We are a community with a shared future, like a family. Faced with com complex international and regional landscape, we need to work together closely, tap into our economic complementarity, and deepen practical cooperation in various fields. First, we need to uphold open cooperation and enhance trade and investment facilitation. China stands ready to work with Mekong countries to promote two-way opening up at a higher level and greater scale, and build a more efficient and vibrant supersized market. Second, we need to highlight innovation and nurture new driving forces for regional development. China stands ready to work with Mekong countries to deepen cooperation in new energy battery, automobile, and PV industry, and expand cooperation in emerging areas such as clean energy, smart manufacturing, big data, and smart cities. Third, we need to deepen integrated development and speed up regional economic integration. China stands ready to work with Mekong countries to deepen infrastructure, hard connectivity, enhance soft connectivity on policies, laws, regulations, rules, and standards. Fourth, we need to have close communication and collaboration for better coordination of regional cooperation mechanisms. China stands ready to work with all sides to practice true multilateralism, advance coordinated development of GMS, Mekong Land Tongue Cooperation, and other mechanisms for an inclusive cooperation atmosphere. Participating parties agreed to expand cooperation in such areas as trade, agriculture, connectivity, digital economy, green development, healthcare, tourism, cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges, forge new driving forces of growth, and contribute to regional peace, development, and prosperity. The summit adopted the a joint declaration and the GMS 2030 Strategy of Innovation-Driven Development and other documents. Next one, please. Hubei Media Group. We noted that 37 least developed countries took part in this year's CIE. Hosts of CIE made special arrangements to provide over 123 booths for exhibitors from these countries and further expand the exhibition area for Africa to showcase their agricultural specialities. Can I share more details. Since its launch, the CRAE has been actively providing facilitation for LDCs. For the past seven years, more and more products from LDCs have entered the Chinese market through the CRAE, which contributed to the industrial development and people's livelihood. China, as the largest developing country and natural number of global south, is all alone committed to supporting south-south cooperation and addressing difficulties in development and promoting cooperation to open up so as to deliver more benefits to people of all countries. Starting from December 1st of this year, China will give zero tariff treatment for 100 percent tariff lines to LDCs. An important step, President Xi Jinping announced at the opening ceremony of the FOCAC Beijing Summit. We will continue to strengthen cooperation with the global thousand countries and support their development and prosperity to jointly realize global modernization. Next question. 
Next one, please. Reuters, according to CNN, President Xi and President-elect Trump had a call. Can you confirm that? President Xi Jinping has congratulated President-elect of the U.S. Donald Trump. President Xi Jinping pointed out that history tells us that both China and the U.S. stand to gain from cooperation and lose from confrontation. A China-U.S. relationship with stable, healthy, and sustainable development serves the common interests of the two countries and meets the expectation of the world. Hope the two sides will work in the principles of mutual respect, peaceful coexistence, and win-win cooperation to enhance dialogue and communication, properly manage differences, and expand mutually beneficial cooperation to find the right way for two countries to get along with each other in the new year to the benefit of the two countries and the world. Good afternoon. Question from AFP. CCTV President Xi Jinping has congratulated President-elect of the U.S. Donald Trump. Next one, please. I think the question is, did she... 我的问题是, 习主席是通过电话还是贺电来 祝贺? I just answered the question. President Xi Jinping has sent a congratulatory message to President-elect of the U.S. Donald Trump. Next one, please. Two questions from the New York Times. New York Times, the first question, how will the President respond to Trump's question about increasing the tax on Chinese goods? The second question, how will the President respond to Trump's question about increasing the tax on Chinese goods? The third question, on your first question, we don't answer hypothetical questions, but let me speak broadly that the trade war produces no winners and is not beneficial facial to the world. On the Taiwan question, it is the most important and the most sensitive question in our relations. China firmly opposes any form of official exchange between the United States and Taiwan. Our position is consistent and clear. The United States government should abide by the One China Principle and the three China-US joint communiques to properly handle Taiwan-related issues so as to avoid harm to our relations and peace stability across the Taiwan Strait. Shenzhen TV, on November 7th, Beijing time, the Disarmament and International Security Committee of the 79th session of the UN General Assembly voted to adopt the resolution titled Promoting International Cooperation on Peaceful Use in the context of international security can share more details with us. We welcome the adoption of the resolution by the first committee of the UNGA. The resolution seeks to strengthen the role of the UN and on the basis of equal-footed participation, promote dialogue and cooperation, formulate guiding principles, safeguard developing countries' legal and legitimate right to peaceful use of science and technology, and urge certain countries to stop abusing export control and imposing unilateral coercive measures. The resolution also decides that the relevant issue needs to be further deliberated at ANGA. This marks the third time to, for China to submit the resolution since 2021, which has received widespread support. China has made the implementation of this resolution a priority for cooperation in the Global Security Initiative and stands ready to work with other countries to pursue the thorough and effective implementation of the resolution and contribute to peace and development for humanity. DPA. German Councillor Schwartz have concluded have declared the collapse of the joint alliance of the government according to from the perspective of China, how will it influence the China Germany 
relations. On your question, this is German's internal affairs. I have no comment, and our position on China-Germany relations is consistent. Next one, please. Thank you. NBC. NBC. Could you please repeat your question? Regarding on China-U.S. relations, China's position is consistent and clear. We always follow the principles of peaceful coexistence, win-win cooperation, and the mutual respect proposed by President Xi Jinping to handle and view China-U.S. relations to promote the sound, steady, and stable development of our bilateral relations. Beijing Youth Daily recently in an exhibition, Light of the Sun, a dialogue between ancient Shu and Inca civilizations was held in Peru, joining wide attention was your comment. China and Peru both are ancient civilizations. People of the two countries share a close bond and similar visions. Exhibitions since last year, including the Journey Through Civilization's World Tour in Peru and the Inca Sky Road and Andean Culture Exhibition in China, have received a warm welcome and further enhanced the mutual understanding and friendship between the two peoples. The exhibition you mentioned opened in Peru recently, presenting the civilizations of two countries with unique charm and demonstrating how different civilizations flourish together. We will continue working with Peru to implement the Global Civilization Initiative and enhance exchanges and mutual learning to make the world a more harmonious and better place. Next one, please. FNU's agency, um, how does China I think so. On the Myanmar question, China's position is quite clear. We support Myanmar in upholding sovereignty, territorial integrity, and interests, and we support all parties of Myanmar in solving questions through consultation, and we also support the political transition process of Myanmar. Next one, please. Are there any more questions? If not, then let's call it a day. Thank you.